Hi Logans, this is Amanda Shepard and today's play along practice is going to be a little simpler than most of the practices I do on here. Um, a couple of you reached out and asked for some uh, um, less complicated uh, asana to play along with, more of a um, beginner style. So rather than being like a two, three focus, this is gonna be probably like a level one, maybe a one, two, more of a level one. Um, and our peak pose is gonna be Utita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. You will need a strap or a towel. Well, this is a kind of standard yoga strap. So you can use this, you can use a kitchen towel, um, just something that can extend your leg, right? That you can loop on. Um, and you will need a block or a large book, okay? To start and a blanket. I'm sitting on my blanket. I'm allow my sits bones to ground. We're going to start in a seated position. And I'm just going to allow my sits bones to root together or to root down and to um, gently get the idea of drawing my sits bones together. as I sit up nice and tall. Allow the shoulders to relax. You want your spine to be nice and long, not pitch forward or pitch back, just some way, somewhere comfortable. Hip points, your aces is higher than your inner knees. That's why the blanket's underneath your sits bones. If you need two blankets, go ahead and do that. If you prefer, if you're more internally rotated and you prefer to sit on a block on your shins, or two blocks, you can do that any height, it's totally fine. Knees do not need to be together. It can be as wide as it's comfortable. Whatever is gonna be easier for your body or more compelling for your structure to do, that's the one you want. Find that softness and just start to feel the breath moving through the body. See if you can um, notice the sensation of touch. Notice what's touching you and what you are touching, right? Your clothes obviously are touching you. Maybe the blanket, um, the mat is, might be touching your feet or your legs, your shins, depending on how you're sitting. have parts of your body touching each other, like the foot on the shin, for example. As you notice those sensations, see if you can just allow them to um, maybe mark the sensation, name it in your mind, and then let it go. Just allow it to be. And then start to notice the sense of touch that's internal. How does the breath feel um, as you inhale, as you inflate the body? Right? Is there a sensation um, of the breath inflating the diaphragm? Right? moving through the intercostal muscles between the rib cage, up into the chest. And then what's the sensation of touch from the inside as you exhale? How does it feel in the body at that pause, right between the inhale and exhale? And that pause at the bottom when the breath is out of the body. That 
kind of each a different idea of a crest, right? And the body's inflating. You have that crest at the top where you're waiting for the breath to leave. And then at the bottom, and that emptiness, it's almost like a, another idea of crest where you're waiting to reinflate. How does it affect your energy? And can you notice how much air you take in? Let go of the same amount of air. Notice how much time each inhale and exhale is, even that out. Inviting a sense of equalness and then allowing yourself to maybe tap into that inner equanimity. We'll take a couple more breaths here. And then with your next inhale, I just want you to reach the right arm forward. Draw the shoulder down and allow the arm bone to move into the socket. So you're placing the shoulder blade on the back of the body, right? I'm gonna take a nice deep inhale here and just reach that arm up. And see if you can get the idea of lifting out of the waist. Beautiful breathing here. Reach your left arm out to the side and see if you can absorb those right ribs into the body. And then keep reaching. Go as far as it's comfortable. Let your left ribs move towards the sky. And you're gonna push into your left arm, come up through center. And as you exhale, you're just going to twist. Bring that right hand behind you. Left hand's gonna reach across. Nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, notice if you arc the back, see if you can draw your belly in. And then allow your twist to happen right at the rib cage in your thoracic spine. Inhale here as you exhale, left ribs move towards the right. Keep that core engaged. Look over your right shoulder. Look over your left shoulder. And come on back through center. You're gonna switch your feet. Breathing here. If you're sitting with your shins on the floor on a block, stay where you are. And then allow your sits bones to spread wide behind you and the belly to move forward like an anterior tilt. And then as you exhale, engage the core. You're gonna round the lower back. See if you can keep your tailbone slightly in that posterior tilt and sit up nice and tall. Allow your sits bones to draw together vigorously and then spread them wide and then let them relax. Find somewhere comfortable in the middle of those two extremes. And see if you can engage your core in a way where you feel like you're zipping a line up the middle of the body. It's gonna engage your mula bandha. We'll do some shoulder circles here. Go both directions. I always like to go backwards again for the second time. And I'm gonna reach the left arm forward. And as I reach the fingers forward, I can feel that shoulder coming forward with me. I'm gonna drop the shoulder head down, right? So you're gonna draw the shoulder blade, you'll feel it move down the back, and then draw the arm bone into the socket. Good breathing here. I'm gonna reach that arm up. Nice deep inhale here. As I exhale, I'm going to absorb or actually I'm gonna reach up and then I'm gonna absorb the left ribs into the body. And just crawl your right arm out. Try to stay nice and long on that right side. Mm -hmm. 
rolling the right ribs to sky and go as far as it's comfortable. And then see if you can get the idea as you push the floor away with your right hand, energetically draw it towards the body and see if you get a little more length on that side. Breathing here. Rolling right ribs to sky. Push into your right hand to come back through center. I'm gonna stay nice and long on all four sides of the waist and reach that left arm behind me. Right hand reaches across. Notice what happened to your low back. Maybe you need to do that work with your belly button. And the twist is here. Look over the left shoulder. Look over the right shoulder. Come on back through center. Good, breathing here. Take a nice deep inhale here, and as I exhale, I'm gonna take the blanket out and come on forward to my all fours. And just start to um, set yourself up for a cat cow. We're gonna stumble shoulder, knees underneath the hips. Gripping the floor with my fingers that are nice and wide, except for my thumb. Allowing my triceps to reach towards the back of the room. And you can check out your feet if you can see your toes. Adjust them so that they're right behind your knees. Breathing here. With my inhale, I'm gonna come through center. I'm gonna reach that left arm out to the side. Try to get nice and long on all four sides of your waist. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna thread the needle, drawing through. Walk that right hand forward. Just lean back with your right shoulder blade. Wrap that right tricep down towards your ear. Most of you are gonna stay here, enjoying this twist. You wanna make some resistance with your arm on the floor, like you're pulling your shoulder toward, or drawing your shoulder towards your left side of the mat. And then the right arm is active and you're trying to uh, bring your tricep to your eyelashes so you can give yourself a butterfly kiss. And if you like, extend the right heel, maybe reach out with that heel, only if that's comfortable for you. <clears throat> Bring that shin back down. I'm going to come back to center. And maybe move the ribs a different way, reaching the left ribs out to the left, rounding, finding that cat, ribs out to the right and then down. And you can do that a couple times. Just a different way to warm up the spine and then go the other way. Inhaling chest down and ribs to the right. Exhaling, you're gonna protract, so push the floor away, round the back and to the left. Find your center, reach your right arm out to the right. Look up, see your thumb. As you exhale, twist underneath the body. I wanna keep my hips right over the knees. Walk that left hand forward, I'm gonna lean back. See here, the toes might get light on the floor, that's okay. And this arm is active, left arm's active, wrapping the tricep down, maybe give yourself a butterfly kiss. All right, so that's just uh, using your eyelashes. See if you can make so much resistance with the dragging the right shoulder towards the right side of your mat isometrically that you can feel a stretch behind your shoulder blade in between the shoulder blade and the spine. And if you like, you can reach the left heel away, All right, maybe. Flex that heel back, extend it back. Breathing here, bring the shin back down. Come on back through center. Then walk your hands forward. You can push your palms into the floor before you melt your chest. Wrap your triceps towards the earth, scooch the belly in and maybe find that lift in the perineal floor as you bring your forehead and nose to the earth. 
And if you like, you can reach your fingertips a little bit further and maybe allow the chest to descend. If that's not you, stay where you are. And you still want to keep those hips right over the knees. Good, come back to your center. Meeting here. This time, you're going to tuck I'm going to turn around so you can see you're going to tuck the right toes reach that right heel back and I want you to turn the heel out to the side so the heel will probably be facing uh, the left side of your mat and the toes facing the right and then let your left toes be in line with the arc of your right foot Come onto your right fingertips. See if you can take your right hand to your ribs. And you can kickstand this left foot if you need to. And I just want you to reach your tailbone toward your right heel and drop your right ribs into the body. Now roll your left ribs to sky and maybe reach the right arm up. Check out your thumb if that's interesting. You can look down for balance or to the side. Breathing here. Reach the arm overhead, and as you exhale, bring that hand down, big toes to touch, draw back child's pose. You can lift your hands and do some wrist circles. You're gonna come back to center, and then just turn your right wrist to the floor. You can have your fingers facing the left hand or facing your knee. Not too much pressure. We don't need a lot of pressure here. You can keep your thumb nice and easy. All right. Bring your right hand down and then take the left hand. All right. Let your thumb relax. Have the wrist right under the shoulder. Maybe turn the hand back towards your knees. Sit back on your heels for a second. If that's too much, you can take your strap behind your knees or your blanket. And sit there and just shake your wrists out doing some wrist circles. Good. Good. You're gonna find your all fours again. And go the same direction that you were before. I'm just gonna take it to the other side. Breathe here, I'm gonna tuck the left toes, reach that heel back, bring the heel down. Right toes in line with the arc of the left foot, unless that's uncomfortable, and then you can kick stand the shin. And then you're gonna take your left hand to your ribs. Right? See if you can drop those ribs in, reach the tailbone towards your heel. Okay, and left arm to sky. Maybe you look up and see your thumb. Maybe not. If you want to look down for balance, find a spot on the floor that's not going to move. If you want to challenge your balance, just look forward. Breathing here. And you're going to swoop that arm overhead like you can give that butterfly fist. As you exhale, bring the hand down. Bring the shin down. Draw back child's pose. Knees a little closer this time. Just see if you can bring your forehead to the floor and reach your hands back just to release the low back. nice deep inhale here as you exhale roll yourself up scoop that belly in coming up to seated I'm gonna come to the middle of my mat I'm gonna push my hands into the floor now if you have two blocks you can grab them all right and you can even place them on medium height if you don't have blocks that's okay you're just gonna do your best with this so if you have blocks, have them right by your side, halfway between the knees and the hip. Same thing with your hands on the floor. Halfway between the knee and the hip. You're gonna push your hands into whatever you're using. The floor blocks nice straight arms. Breathing here as you exhale, bring the knees to the chest. 
and just see if you can bring your sits bones down. Now, if you're using blocks, you're gonna have a little bit more room to play, right? Gonna have your hands, nice straight arms. See how long your spine gets. Now push in, bring your knees up, feet to the floor, and then you can walk it through, all right? And I want you to keep one block with you. You're gonna have it by your right side. And I'm just gonna turn around for the uh, demo. So I'm mirroring. Okay, on my sits bones, I'm gonna take my hands to the back of the knees. Nice straight arms, finding that C curve that's really popular in Pilates. As you exhale, scoop the belly in and roll it out one vertebra at a time. And then I want you to make it number four, right ankle over that left knee. Now, you don't have to use your hands at all. You can use your right hand just to reach the inner right knee away. And then I want you to take your left fingertips, index, middle finger together, and just place it right on your hip point. Get right underneath that hip point. The other thing you can do is like an awesome pasta hand, right? And get the thumb right underneath the hip point and the index and middle finger at the top of your thigh and make space between those two things, okay? And then you can just draw the left knee in a little more and be mindful that your right knee's not dropping off to the side. You're staying nice and even there. You can take both hands behind your hamstring, use your elbow to reach the inner knee away, or find your shin. Or again, not do any of those, right? Couple breaths here. As you exhale, when you bring your left foot down and you're gonna find your strap. And place it around the ball of your right foot and reach that leg to the sky. If it's available to you, you're gonna reach your left leg long on the mat. If not, you can keep it here, it'll be all right. But try to reach it long, right? When I first started practicing, all the teachers used to say to get your hamstring, left hamstring on the floor. I've got glutes there, so my hamstring has never touched the floor. It's been 26 years. Not really a goal for me. Okay, one side of the strap in each hand. I want you to be mindful that you're being nice to your fingers. There's no reason for them to white knuckle or overstress here. Just hold the strap. Shoulders are easy. <sighs> Keep reaching that heel to the sky. And then take both sides of the strap into your left hand for a moment. You're gonna take your right hand, index and middle finger. Find your yummy pasta hand, actually. Find your thumb, right? Pasta. I'm gonna place the thumb right underneath the hip point, index and middle finger to the top of your thigh, make space there, and then reach your right sits bones towards the top of the mat. And then I want you to have your block and just take it so that it's like right at your outer hip. You can turn it at an angle. I'm gonna place my right hand on the strap and turn the toes out, externally rotating and reach that leg out to the side. Now the block is gonna catch me. And the reason why I want that there is because I wanna keep my sacrum nice and even on the floor. So normally, without the block, when we reach it out to the side, right, the hip hikes up, and we kind of flop over to the right in our left side body goes with us. So I wanna keep it honest and I wanna make sure that my low back stays on the floor. So I'm gonna show you from a different angle. We're a little bit closer, all right? So when I lay down, I want my low back to stay on the floor, okay? I'm gonna turn the toes out. I'm gonna reach this leg out to the side and I don't want that left side picking up. So I'm gonna use the block to make sure I don't go too far, right? So it's gonna support me and 
I can keep that right six bones moving towards my left heel and the left side down. Now if you look, if you pick up your head and look, and you imagine that the mat is in the air, you'll notice that your heel might be relatively aligned with the arc of your foot. Right? Maybe, maybe not. But breathing here. Left thumb reaches out to the side. If you want to get really technical, you can take both sides of the strap with your left hand and reach your right hand nice and long. And just notice where your right arm is. If it's not touching your toes here, you're not going to touch your toes when you do it standing up. So I'll show you from a different angle. It's like off the mat. Alright, so my arm was like this. I'm going to reach that arm nice and long. Reach that left arm out to the side and look at your left hand. But then just notice, right? If you're not touching your toes here, you're not going to touch your toes when you do this standing up, right? Maybe you find your shin later, okay? Inhale, reach that right heel to the sky. I'm going to take the strap into my left hand, reach your right arm out to the side, and then I'm going to. Twist. I'm going to go across the body. Oh, look, rolling all the way onto the left side. Crunching here, so I want to reach that right sits bones away. Square your chest to the sky. Look at your right fingertips. Right, so you don't want this. You want to keep those sits bones away. And then allow your toes to move towards your shoulder. Back up to your center. Take the strap off the foot. Let the right toes come down to meet the left. Ooh, just water those. It's nice and chilly. Draw the knees in, couple low back circles, and then I'm gonna switch to the other side. So I'm gonna bring my block there. You can stay laying down where you are. Okay, so I've got my block. Take my number four, left ankle over the right knee. Notice if I'm left knee's dropping off. I want to keep my low back nice and even on the floor, right? So I don't want it scooching up or lifting like that. I want to stay nice and even. And you can double check by bringing your fingertips to your hip points. And if they're making a straight line without one going up wonkily, right? They're nice and even, you want that. Take your left hand and reach the inner left knee away. You can grab your hamstring. You can do both of those things. You want to keep this left foot nice and flat. So it doesn't need to be lazy. Keep it active. Any hand variation you like. Usually what you did on side one works on side two. Couple breaths, let your breath be nice and easy. Notice how it feels. Do you start getting like your breath is too quick? or it's um, something you can't control, then you're going to take a break and um, stop and find that nice, easy pace of breath. Most important part of your practice. All right, I'm going to bring that right foot down and find my strap, grab my block, grab those there. Now I'm going to take the strap around the ball of the foot to start. All right, I'm going to reach my right leg nice and long on the mat. Some of you might have the right leg bent. You'll survive. It'll be okay if you want to. If your knee is bent, then you can always take another block. Right? 
and place it under there for support. That's fine. Why not, right? Another book, if you're using books, it's all right. Then I'm gonna find my yummy pasta hands. Mwah! Thumb goes right underneath that hip point, scooch it in, and my index and middle finger are right next to the thigh, and I'm gonna like separate them. So the hip point's going to go into the belly as I reach the left sits bones towards the top of the mat. If that pasta hand doesn't work for you, you're like, what is she talking about? You're going to take your thumb, slide it in right below the hip point, and then hook it around, right? And imagine you're taking your leg off stage, right? So you're going to reach that left sits bones towards the top of the mat. You can reach out through your heel, stretch the calf. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna glide my strap down to the heel so that it's a direct line from the heel through the leg bone into the socket, okay? Both sides of the strap in my left hand. I'm gonna take my block and place it right outside the hip. Turn my left toes out and reach that leg out to the side. And again, I want to keep the integrity of my sacrum. All right. Notice you can, if your elbow's bent here, which it might be, just gently reach your right hand across, straighten your left arm, and then reach your right arm out to the side. And notice where it is, right? If you don't touch the toes here, you are not touching your toes when you um, do this uh, or the top of your foot when you do this standing up. Um, touching your toes is not a goal in a teacher tree konasana. Some traditions teach to do yogi toe lock. You don't. You don't need it. No one needs it. Keep that left six bone scooching under. And you can lift your head and have a look. Right. See where you are. And bring it back down. Now, if you feel like you can keep the integrity, you can let the block come out a little further. Right? If you lose the Connection to the clock, then, or actually, if you lose the relationship of your sacrum nice and ah! even across the floor, rearrange your block so you keep that. Right? Inhale back through center. I'm going to switch the class. Don't keep your block there. I'm going to move mine out of the way so you can see. And once again, I don't want this hip hiking. Ooh, I don't want that. I want this direction. Reach the left arm out to the side. Twist and go on over. And then and square your chest to the sun. And one more time, reach that left sits bones towards the top of the mat because likely you're going to hike it up. So reach it away. And if you have a wall or something, you're welcome to use it to feel your leverage. That's a gift over your left fingertips. Inhale back through center. Take that strap off the foot, maybe a couple ankle circles. Left toes down to meet the right. We're gonna put our strap to the side for a moment. Knees into the chest. Take your hands to the back of the knees and we're just gonna rock and roll a few times and we're gonna come to a, a forward fold. If you need to come through all fours to do that, go ahead. So exhale, toes reach behind you. Inhale, roll up. Exhale. Inhale, roll up. And we're going to come to standing forward fold. It's an awesome. Use your hands if you need to. Inhale, extend the spine. If your spine doesn't extend easily, you're going to take your hands to your shins and pull up on the skin. So you can draw the belly in and lengthen all four sides of your waist. Exhale, refold. Bend your knees if you need to. 
Notice where your weight is, if it's in your heel, see if you can keep your heels on the floor, but come forward a bit so that your ankle, knee, and hip is in the same line. Arms out to the side. I'm gonna do some wrist circles as you hinge up. Forward Vastasana, upward facing hands. Exhale, Samasthiti. Ah! Hey, sweet girl. Inhale, reach your arms to the sky, exhale, hands out to the side, and fold. Ardha Uttanasana. Place your hands on the floor. If you're using your blocks, you can have your blocks there, and you're just going to step the right foot to the back of the mat. Left foot back to meet it, finding a plank pose. You want to get the idea of, as you push your hands down, see if you can Reach your tailbone towards your heels and get the idea of zipping up the body, finding that um, energetic line. And as you exhale, you're gonna bring your shins to the floor, reach the feet away. Keep the belly engaged. You're gonna spread your collarbones and just bend the elbows, let the sternum lean forward and push back up. You don't want your shoulder to go below the elbow. back up. Last time. Come back up. Okay, and then I'm going to find a cat cow. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Shake your head yes and no. Starting with the right foot, you're going to walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, extend the spine, exhale, fold. Let your wrists relax. Arms out to the side, coming all the way up. Forward Vastasana, upward facing hands, exhale, Samastihi. And take a moment in your Tadasana. Inhale, reach the arms, exhale, diving in. So we're doing a version um, a modified Surya Namaskara A. You're going to extend the spine, step the left foot to the back of the mat. It's a big step. Lunge. Right foot back to meet it. Bring the shins down. You want to make sure that your hips um, stay lifted. You're not going to shrug your shoulders and bring your hips to the floor. You want to stay here. So bend the elbows, sternum lean. Modified Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, push the floor away. Exhale. Inhale, push the floor away. Last time. Come back up. Maybe find um, a cat cow. So I want you to bring your hips right over the knees. Extend the spine. Exhale, push the floor away. Flex the spine. Tuck your toes. Lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Breathing here, think of the idea. Imagine you had that pasta hand and you're drawing your hip point into the belly. Then starting with the left foot, walk up to the top of the mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold, arms out to the side, do wrist circles each time, go the other way. Urdhvastasana, exhale, Samastihi. And breathing here, we're gonna try another option. If that's interesting, you can stick with the one you've been working with. Inhale, lift up, exhale. Dive in. Ardha Uttanasana, I'm going to take the blocks away this time. I'm going to bend my knees enough so I can get my palms down. Step the right foot to the back of the mat. Left foot back to meet it. Shins come to the earth, reach the toes away. Okay? I'm going to stay nice and long. Or, uh, I want to keep my wrists right under the shoulders, triceps facing back. And I want to keep the belly engaged. Right? So I'm not dropping the hips, I'm not shrugging my shoulders, okay? So I'm energetically 
pull my hands towards my feet as I reach the sternum forward. Ardha Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, push the floor away. Exhale, Ardha Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, push the floor away. Last time. Inhale, push the floor away. Walk your hands back so that they're under your shoulders and you're gonna find that cat cat. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog, a little bit modified, it's a little short. You can walk your hands forward if you want. You wanna keep your spine nice and long, especially since we're working towards Uttita Trikonasana today. So some of us naturally back bend and splay the front ribs. See if you can knit your two front ribs together as you reach your tailbone towards your heel, All right? So you're not splaying. And then you can bend your knees if the heels don't come down easily, All right? One more breath, starting with the right foot, walk your feet to the top of the mat. Extend the spine, exhale, fold. Maybe allow the back of the hands to come to the floor or to your blocks. Ardha right. Uttanasana, reach your arms out to the side, coming all the way up. Upward facing hand, Ordhvastasana, exhale, Samastiti. Last Surya Namaskar at A. And reach those arms up. Exhale, dive in. Bend your knees if you need to. Plant your hands. Left foot, big step to the back of the mat. Right foot to meet it. Shins down. Reach the toes away. Keep the belly in. So it's not a back bend, right? You see the difference? Sternum forward. Come back up. Now, some of you might only go an inch. That's fine. Keep the integrity of your core. All right. Those of you who are here and it's nice and easy, maybe lift the toes. And then if that's you, gently reach the feet back. You want to keep your arms nice and straight. Spread your collarbones. Downward facing dog. Shake your head yes or no. And then walk your feet to the top of the mat. Inhale, extend the spine, exhale, fold. For circles to come up. For the sasan, exhale, samastiti. Okay, we have you um, find Tadasana. So find a mountain pose that works for your hips, right? That works for your body. I think my head might be cut off, but that's okay. So I want you to focus on the feet. Some people naturally turn out, some people naturally turn in, right? You wanna find something comfortable. And then set it up, lift the toes, you can gauge the arc of the foot, spread them nice and wide, and relay them back down. Allow your arms to be easy. And just breathe here. And then I'm gonna have you turn your toes out wherever you are, um, kind of like a modified uh, first position in ballet. All right. I'm gonna breathe here. Toes should be comfortable. You're not straining your knees. You can keep a little bend in your knees if you want. Draw the hip points in. You're standing pretty tall. And I want you to get the idea of energetically drawing your heels towards each other and see if you can find that zipper action. And, up. and then you can relax your glutes, right? The glutes tend to get tight when you do that. Let them relax, but see if you can maintain that idea of the zipper. That's called Mula Bandha in yoga. You can let that relax. Shake it out. Just stick a pin in that. Keep it in mind. All right. With your next inhale, reach those arms to the sky. Exhale, dive in. Ardha Uttanasana, hands to shins if you need to. If you like to use blocks, set your blocks up. And they can be any height, all right? You're gonna keep your right foot where it is. Step your left foot to the back of the mat so you're in a lunge. And then you're gonna turn your toes 
in and notice what happened to your right hip. It probably stuck out to the side. Right, so a lot of times, I'll show you from this angle, you step the foot back, turn the heel out so you have heel to arch alignment, and your right hip might have stuck out to the side. See if you can reach it in, and you're gonna reach your left arm forward. Turn your chest to the side, keep reaching that left arm forward, and see if you can reach it up. And come on up, fear of a draw some of two. Okay, I'll show you from a different angle. Reach the arm to sky like someone's pulling your wrist up, okay? Breathing here and notice where you are, right? You take your hands to your hips. A lot of us have that left hip sticking out. Maybe you want to draw it in. Now, remember that idea of um, drawing the feet towards each other we just did? See if you can do that here. Bending into that front knee for as much load as you want. Okay. Now you're going to root into your left foot and straighten the right leg. Good. Rebend into your right knee. Root into the left foot. Straighten the right leg. Exhale. Bend into your right knee. Inhale, root into that left foot, straighten the right leg. Now just pay attention and see how your feet feel. Is there as much energy underneath the outside of that left foot as there is under the big toe of the right? If there's not, then notice where uh, the discrepancy is. Maybe you wanna bring a little energy to your left inner thigh, so you can lift up here and allow that energy to go down the outside of the leg. Rebend into that front knee. Right. This time take your forearm to your thigh. I want you to take your hands to your left ribs and just absorb those left ribs into the body. Now take your left hand to your low back and see if you can reach your tailbone towards your left heel. Now roll your right ribs to sky. You can reach your left arm straight out of the socket towards the back of your mat and turn your palm up and maybe reach that arm overhead. Maybe give yourself that butterfly kiss. Good. Are you crunching the right side ribs? Can you reach out through that side? Exhale. Frame the front foot. You can use blocks if you want. And you just place your hands on the floor, pivot the back heel, push into your blocks or floor, and step back. Now you can move through a vinyasa. So Chaturanga Dandasana, maybe your shins are on the floor. Inhale, cobra up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Shake your head yes or no. Starting with the right foot, walk to the top of the mat. And now extend the spine, exhale, fold. Arms out to the side with circles, all the way up. Exhale, Thomas T. Inhale, reach the arms, and as you exhale, fold in. Ardha Uttanasana. These blocks, if you're using them, I'm going to step the right foot to the back of the mat and turn the heel in and check it out. Heel is in line with the arc of the right foot and notice where your hip went, right? Did you crunch that left side? See if you can reach that sits bones towards the back of the mat, okay? I'm going to reach your right arm forward, open the ribs to the side, left ribs moving to right. Reach the right arm up like someone's grabbing your wrist. Come on up. Fear of a draw some of two. Notice the right hip. Maybe you want to draw it in. Okay. I'm going to show you from a different angle. 
So from your lunge, feel the arch, and reach that right arm forward, up and around, okay? Take your hands to your hips, root into the right foot, straighten that left leg, and then re-bend into the knee. All right, do that a few times. Bend into the knee. Now, if your knee is right over the ankle and you feel like you're in too big of a position, like you're in a split, heel toe that back foot in. Okay? Should be something where you feel like you can maintain the pose. And as, even though this inner thigh is lifting up, you still want the idea that scissoring action of the heel the feet drawing towards each other. All right, if that makes sense. And if you want less load, you're gonna bend the knee a little bit less. Mm -hmm. If you have a super long femur, the knee might go over the ankle. That's okay, it's totally fine. All right, nice deep inhale here. Let your forearm come to the thigh and take your right hand to your ribs and draw the ribs in. Now take your right hand to your low back and find that work. Let the sacrum be nice and long. And then you're gonna bring your left ribs towards the right. Reach your right arm straight back. And then turn the palm up and reach it over the back. Maybe you can give yourself a butterfly kiss. Good, how does your left shoulder feel? Is it crunching into your ear? See if you can draw it down and away. Beautiful, nice deep inhale here as you exhale. I'm gonna frame that front foot, pivot the back heel, step the left foot back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Cobra Up Dog. Maybe you're gonna keep your toes tucked under. Let me move this block out of the way. See if you can keep your belly in. It's very active work and spread your collarbones. Now the danger here is to jump into your low back. You want to stay lifted. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just a different variation. Not one I particularly like, but some people love it. Shake your head yes and no. But it's a little easier because it's less work on the feet. Starting with the left foot, walk yourself up to the top of the mat. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, fold. Arms off to the side of a circle or the sasan, exhale, samastihi. Staying at the top of your mat, just gonna check the time. Oh my gosh, we already have 53 minutes, are you good? <laughs> Inhale, reach those arms to the sky. Lifting up, grab the right wrist with your left hand. As you reach the tailbone down, lift out of all four sides of your waist. And then just spread the collarbones. And then you're gonna reach those right fingertips over. Reach out of the left side waist and keep going. Good, I want you to keep the length on that right side. Come back up. And then from here, Step that left foot out and turn your toes in. You're going to interlace your hands behind you so you're setting up for Prasarta Pada Tanasana legs. If you want to open your hamstrings a little more, you can turn your toes in. I'm going to take my hands behind me, interlacing the fingers, lengthen the tailbone. Just a little heart opening. Exhale, hinging at the hips to dive forward. Make sure you're reaching the sternum forward and coming on down, and you can use blocks. If there's no way that you're gonna go that far, that's fine. Take your hands on blocks, okay? If you don't need the blocks, don't use them. Let your hands come to the floor, fingertips in line with your toes, or on blocks, drawing the shoulders away from the ears, getting nice and long all four sides of the waist. Shake your head yes or no. Now you're gonna straighten your arms. You're gonna take that left hand right underneath your 
nose, okay? Right hand to your low back. Nice deep inhale here. Push down with your left hand and energetically pull it, to, uh, pull it um, towards the side of your mat. And then you're gonna let your left ribs move towards the right. You might keep your hand at the low back. Reach the right arm out to the side for those of you who are interested. And draw that arm bone into the socket, fingertips to sky, finding a twist. I want you to notice that your left hip is probably dropped down. You're going to allow that. You're going to keep that there. Look up at your fingertips. As you exhale, take the right hand to the floor or to your blocks. Hands to your hips, you're going to come on up. Right heel turns in. Find that scissoring action with the legs. And then I want you to reach your right arm straight out to the side. Nice deep inhale here as you exhale. You're gonna cut your hip back, right? So you're just going to scissor and you're probably crunching that left side. See if you can uncrunch it, right? Right arm reaching out. Left hand at your low back, lengthen your tailbone and keep reaching with that right arm. When you can't reach anymore, all four sides of the length working equally, you're gonna let your right hand drop, okay? Roll the right ribs to sky. You might find it's about the same as when you did this on the floor because you are in the same shape, right? Reach your left arm like you're gonna pat a giant poodle. Draw that arm bone into the socket. Reach those fingers to sky. Look up and see your thumb if that's interesting. If that's too much balance, you're gonna look down. Find something that's not gonna move. Maybe look to the side if you're challenging the balance. Maybe you're gonna see your thumb. And see if you can feel the pose here. Keep that scissoring actions with the legs. Allow the ribs to drop. The top ribs are drawing down. The bottom ribs are drawing to the sun. Breathing here. If you like, you can reach that left arm overhead. And as you exhale, you're going to take your left hand to your hip. You're going to bend your right knee and allow your forearm to come to the thigh. Breathing here. Left arm up and over. Frame that front foot through a vinyasa if you want one. This time, tops of the feet on the floor. Push down with your arms. Don't allow the shoulders to move into your ears. Push down. Energetically draw the hands and feet towards each other, keeping the belly in. Ordva Mukha Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. If you don't like upper dog, you can do a cat cow or you can take cobra. And walk your feet to the top of the mat. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, fold. Reach those arms out to the side. All the way up, forward, Vastasana. Exhale, Samastihi. Return to the front. You can see you're going to reach that left arm to sky. Grab the wrist with your right hand. I'm going to show from this side. Lengthen the tailbone. Now lift out of all four sides of the waist and reach those left fingertips over to the right. And then lift out of the right side waist and keep reaching. Okay? That makes sense? Good. Keep the length on the left side waist as you come up. And then you're just going to step that um, right leg way back and turn the toes in. Right. Hands behind the back, other index finger on top, setting up for Prasada Padottanasana. C. Lengthen your tailbone, shoulder blades lift the heart. Exhale, come on down. Down. hands come to the floor you can place your hands on blocks all right 
place your right hand right underneath your nose on a block if you want. And look down, I'm looking directly. My nose is right over that knuckle, okay? I'm gonna take the left hand to my low back and lengthen it. And um, I just want you to notice that even here, this right hip is dropping and I'm gonna allow that to happen. I'm not gonna force it straight. I'm gonna let it be, okay? Reach your left arm out to the side. You're gonna pet the poodle. Draw that arm bone into the socket and then reach that arm to sky only if you want to. And notice how much that right hip dropped. That's okay. The reason why I'm doing that is because right now the hip is, the sacrum is even. Once I start to find that twist, I'm rolling the right ribs towards the left, the twist is gonna happen behind my rib cage. I still want my sacrum even and to keep it, it's gonna drop the right hip. Okay, so you're gonna let that happen. Breathe in here. Nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, you're gonna bring the hand down, take your hands to your hips, come back through center. I'm gonna turn the left heel in, heel to arch alignment, all right? And I'm just gonna reach that left arm straight out. Then I'm gonna hinge at the hip. I'm gonna hinge, scissoring action with the legs, left arm reaching out over that left foot. Keep reaching, reaching, reaching. When you can't reach anymore, you're gonna let the hand drop. Some of you, it will be towards your ankle or top of the foot, right? But you're not overreaching. We're not doing here and turning into a forward fold to find the foot or something. You want to keep that length on the side waist, okay? Some of you it might be here, right? Totally counts. This is still Utita Trikonasana. For some of you, you might have your hand on a wall. This is still Utita Trikonasana, right? Totally fine. Tailbone's long. Technically, the pose is three triangles. You can see the big one, right? And then there's one between the legs and there's one between the shoulder. All right, find your big poodle, scratch their head. Arm bone draws in, lift up. Can you drop your right ribs in a little bit? Can you lengthen your tailbone? Can you reach your tailbone away from the crown of the head? And can you allow your left ribs to find the sun? Maybe even lean back a little. All right, let your gaze be where it's gonna support you. Arm overhead if that's interesting. Maybe find that butterfly kiss. As you exhale, take your right hand to your hip. You're gonna re-bend into that left knee and just take your forearm to the thigh. Keep the integrity of your spine. And then as you exhale, frame that front foot. Move it through Chaturanga Dandasan. Maybe find a back bend. If you don't like up dog, bring the shins down and just take a cat cow. And then we're gonna take a child's pose. Big toes to touch, knees nice and wide, low back. Then you can bring your knees a little closer. Forehead down, reach back with your hand. Rounding the shoulders. Scoop the belly and roll yourself up. Nice deep inhale here and you're gonna find a seated position. You can either bring your sits bone down and scooch your legs around, or if you like, you can use blocks, all right? Straighten your arms, bring your knees into your chest and walk your feet through, or you can do it without blocks. And just straighten my arms, push down. Come on through. Hands behind the knees, exhale, roll it out one vertebra at a time. And just drop your knees off to the right, back through center, off to the left. Knee to the chest, couple low back circles. 
And I'm gonna find that blanket because I get cold in Shavasana. Set myself up for a final relaxation. Letting your breath go, letting the practice go.
59. Let that cycle begin to bring some awareness back to the breath. Taking a nice deep inhale in, exhale through the mouth. Start to move the fingers and toes, do some wrist ankle circles. Reach out through the arms and legs and maybe draw the knees into the chest. Side of the body to roll on to for a breath or two. And when you're ready in your own time, make your way up to a nice, comfortable seated position. Sitting up nice and tall. Hmm. You use a blanket to sit on them. Maybe refold it. <laughs> It'll be available for you. relax underneath the shoulders. Sitting up nice and tall. And I'm just going to end with one ohm. Taking a nice deep inhale in. Your body. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, and perfect peace. Namaste, Yogan. Namaste. Thanks. Have a good day.